How's it going everybody? It's Stellar here, and today I wanted to show you guys my process of making like a classic uh, tin can that you would see from like the early 1900s, uh, like this one I made here. And I'm just gonna just run through the process and show you guys basically how I go about doing that. And I did want to mention that I am sorry for not uploading for a literal million years. Um, I've just been very busy preparing to do uh, other things with my life. I've been handling a bunch of different things and all of that. So it's not that I've just ditched you guys or anything and I am planning on releasing a course here soon. It's just I've had a lot going on and working on a an RV for travels and everything so that's been pretty fun but yeah I'm gonna be making a old tobacco can today um, not getting too crazy with it it's not gonna be game ready either I just wanna make an old can something that I can take screenshots of and just look at and mostly just use it for practice of texturing and whatnot so that's what we're gonna be doing today so I just took the default cube and squished it down and stretched it to get kind of a rectangular shape and then just beveled over the edges and now I'm just going to take the tops and the bottoms here, bevel those over like so, probably something like that. And then I'm going to add a loop cut here and then I'm going to bevel it just so we can kind of get the, the lid going around and we're gonna cheat it so I'm just gonna grab the loop on the top and we're gonna scale it out just a little bit like so and then I'm add another loop cut in there I would have done this prior but I kinda forgot what I was doing so I'm just gonna bring that back in a little bit and so we're kinda going forward the lip around the container here it's not gonna be hinged or anything it's just gonna be a pry open lid I'm going to take these two here, just move it up. And then I'm going to take this and then bevel it so it's nice and curved. Just going to move this up a little bit. Then I'm going to grab this edge here and go to the Hard Ops menu and just do Curve Extract so I can get a nice little ring around it, like rolled, rolled metal on tin cans. So we're going to go with that and I'm just going to increase it a little bit, something like this. And in fact, we can go bigger with that, like so. And that works for me. Now I'm just going to sharpen it to give it a nice smooth shade. And then I'm going to shade smooth this. So we have our can, basically. And like I said, this isn't going to be game ready or anything of the such. I just really want to make a tobacco can. And before we... I'm just going to convert that to mesh. And I'm actually going to go in, take these two faces here, and just inset them. And then scale them in. Then I'm going to sharpen this, maybe scaled it in too much, I'm just going to bevel this, and that looks like crap, so I'm just going to control Z it, and I'm doing this live, I'm going to add just a couple of edits, but I really just want to show you guys my process and show you that messing up is okay. But I am, however, going to be insetting this face. And then insetting again. Pushing it inwards. And then we're going to take just the two edge loops on the outside and bevel them. And we have a nice little tin. So now comes the fun part of UV unwrapping it. Um, you don't you don't have to triangulate it. 
Trust me, I'm a madman. I've practiced. I'm just going to take these loops here. This loop. One along the outside. This loop. And we'll go with that one there. I lied. That one. We'll just mark those as seam. I'm going to go ahead and hide this. Go back into edit mode. And with hard ops, the reason why I already have this seam here with hard ops, I have enabled uh, apply seam whenever I do sharp. So that's pretty much how that's there. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing. With this. mark the seam there and then I'll do one along the bottom too so we don't have stretched faces or anything I did not mean to mark sharp I meant to mark seam cool so we got that now we're gonna select everything scale it down doesn't have to be exact I just want to scale it down so the textures work better for it and it's closer to real world scales and not two meters wide. So we're going to apply scale. In fact, we're just going to apply all transforms. And then I'm just going to join both of these together. We're going to name this 10. Go into the UV editing. Unwrap it. I'm going to use Packmaster. You don't have to use Packmaster, but I love using Packmaster. Kind of just makes everything look a bit better. I'm going to give it a pixel margin of 8 pixels. And luckily we don't have any crazy UVs. It could be better unwrapped or better optimized, but nothing's crazy, so I'm, gonna, I'm happy with it. So now all I'm going to do is just file export FBX and then when I export it I'm just gonna select mesh objects only and or selected objects only and mesh and then I'm gonna give it a name and we'll go from there alright I went ahead and opened up my substance painter so what I'm gonna do here is just get everything imported and baked out so for my template it's just gonna be PBR metallic roughness alpha blend that's pretty much how I have everything set up as. I'm going to select 4K because that's what we're going to be working with. I'm not going to touch anything else here. I'm just going to select the object and go from there. Once I've got the object selected, I'm going to go ahead and press OK. I'll take a look at it here in Substance. It imported correctly. So now we're going to go back up to File. Or actually, we're not going to go to File at all. We're going to go to Texture Set Settings. Bake mesh maps, 4K, uncheck ID and thickness because I don't need those. And we're going to do four times anti-aliasing. So I'm going to bake this and then once it's done we'll come back. Alright, I'm back and everything is now baked and ready to go. I also imported the tobacco logo that I made in Affinity Photo just using one of their uh, logo templates that they had. I just went in and edited it to make it look like an old school uh, tobacco logo. So that's what we're going to use for the tin can logo. But to start off, we need to make this look like a nasty old rusted up can. So what I like to do is go through my smart materials and see if I find a good one that's already in Substance Painter. 
And there are a pretty decent amount of good ones that are already in Substance Painter. I have several that I've bought, um, but we're just gonna, I'm gonna try to keep two either stuff that I've made or stuff that you can find within Substance Painter. So we're gonna go with Steel Painted Chip Dirty. Drag that and drop it right onto it. That looks like crap, so we're not gonna go with it. It's all about finding a good base coat to kind of get an idea of what you really want to do as far as looks go. So as you can see we got our seam lines here that's we can easily fix that with uh, changing some of the settings within the smart material but I am pretty happy with how this turned out just as a smart material and as we can tell my unwrap wasn't really great as far as um, stretching goes but it's quick and dirty what can be expected. So I'm just gonna go through and uh, in fact we're not gonna do this at all we're just going to make one of our own from scratch so it'll be easy I'm sorry my brains all over the place so we got our base coat here I'm gonna turn off the height because it's kinda ugly and immediately swap it to track planer gets rid of our seams this will be our base metal here Next up, I'm going to get Rust Coarse. This triplaner. And we're also going to make this a little bit more saturated and a bit darker. So something like that. Next up, I'm going to go to Smart Masks here. stains and scratches go into the mask editor and we can just go through and tweak some of this so I'm gonna increase the balance in fact we are going to find a better mask than this. It's all about finding good masks. We can make a smart mask if we wanted to, but that takes too much time and I'm not trying to waste that much time. So we're going to go with paint old. See what that looks like. I'm going to copy paste that layer and remove the mask and we're going to go back to our stains and scratches we're just going to layer up some masks okay next up we need a good paint so we're going to go with Steel Painted, because it's got nice surface imperfections already on it. Go ahead and increase the scale a little bit to get some of those splotches to be a bit bigger. We're going to make this red. And I'm going to copy this mask, add a black mask, paste into mask, and then we're just going to invert it so we can kind of see what we got going on here. And then I'm going to actually just increase the global balance a little bit. Turn down the curvature. Next up, I'm going to add a folder 
I call this paint. I'm gonna drag and drop that into there. We're gonna copy this mask. Add a black mask. Paste into the mask. We're gonna invert this one as well. kind of play with the values and see what we like and don't like. Next up, going back to this one, I'm going to right click and add a paint and we're going to clean up some of these seams that we see here. Good old fashioned trusty dirt two or dirt one. Add some of that paint back in where those seams are and just kind of clean it up and make it not so crappy. So we want crappy, but we don't want overly crappy. And I wish I had screencast keys for Substance Painter. I, I can probably download a actual screencast program that would not be app dependent, but again, it's all about that lazy hustle. Is someone who's taught me very well always said it's all about the hustle you gotta find out what works best for you so I'm pretty happy with how this looks here next up I'm just going to click this layer add a regular layer here going to go to my project and search up tobacco I'm just gonna select color here that's gonna be our stencil I screwed it up. Base color, I believe. Nope, that's not it. Now I'm just going to go for a good optimal logo placement. Okay, that'll work. Paint that on here. So now we got our logo on there, but if you look, it is incredibly shiny and we can't be having any of that craziness. So we're going to click back on to the paint layer here, get out of stencil mode, go to the eraser. We're going to erase only the roughness. gets rid of that shine from the projection. So now we have a pretty even projection. Next up, I'm going to try to match these reds as best as I can.
works for me. So next up, I'm just going to go back to this layer and on the eraser here, and we're gonna select just the color. Brushes, and we're just going to knock back this texture a bit, kind of make it blend in with what's behind it a bit better. And I'm not entirely sure why that is not working. It's because I only had there. I'm just going to go in, like I said, knock back some of the color and give it some blend. That kind of works for me. Next up, I'm going to add a fill layer and a black mask. Go to alphas here, and I'm just going to scroll through and find some pretty decent alphas. I'm going to make sure I don't have jitters on at all. Just add some imperfections, some scratches, and all that fun stuff. And with these scratches, we're going to do some pretty cool height stuff. Okay, so next up for the base color, we're just going to actually, what we're going to do is just select only the height, bump the height down, we're going to go back to our materials here, rust fine, add a black mask, we're going to copy this mask. We're doing a lot of copy and pasting with the masks here. So we're going to paste in the mask. So now we have rust here. Kind of a darker colored rust. That looks pretty good. So, we're still too, 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 way too shiny. So, the next step, we're going to add a fill layer. Go to our smart masks. Dusty, dirty. Some of the smart masks have the ability to go into uh, triplanar, but this one does not, so we'll have to go in and fix the seams, which is no big deal. But this will work for our roughness variations.
I'm going to add color back into it. But we're going to go with kind of a dirt. If we adjust this, it should kind of give us some color variation and still leave us with our height. So we're looking pretty good so far. Next up, I'm going to go in and just add a black mask again. Add the brushes here. I'm going to go with concrete light. Just air in some white in here, but we're going to change this to. this colored yellow go to multiply that doesn't do what I want to so we're just gonna go back to that and basically what I'm trying to do is just kinda add some color variation within the the white text here And we're just going through and changing it up, adding some yellow for some sun fade. And some wear and tear lines or areas. So we're about finished up here. Next up, what we can do is add yet another fill layer. I'm going to bring this one all the way up to the top here. We're going to go to our smart material or smart masks. Get some dirt cavity action going. Actually, we're going to go with dust occlusion and see what that looks like first. Can't even tell it's there dirt cavities. That's much better. But not really. So I'm gonna go through, I'm just kinda looking at some of these masks here to get pretty much this going. Now that we have this going, we can edit it and do some more tricks. I'm just going to increase that. Our base color. I'm just going to search rust. We'll go with uh, rust fine again. some of that roughness back. Rust is really rough. Make a nice dark crappy colored rust. Next up I'm gonna add a folder, put that into the folder. 
we're going to add a bitmap mask. Search up grunge. And I'm just scrubbing the values, playing with it. That's not really going to do too terribly much, but we'll go in with a paint, fix things up a little bit more, like these horrible seams here. Say anything if you don't say anything. Maybe someday I'll find happiness in the meantime today. Once we're happy with our result should be about time to export it. And I think I'm pretty happy with the results, so we're gonna export this. So to export, I'm just gonna export the textures here. You'll navigate to where you want your textures to be put. Keep mine PBR Metallic Roughness, PNG, 8 bits, leave it pretty much exactly how it is, and I will just export. And before I do that, I'll just check my list of exports, and it's just going to be base color, emissive height, metallic, normal roughness. Uh, the emissive I don't need, but it's going to give me that anyways. I don't feel like unchecking it, so we're going to export that. Now it's done, we'll save the file, and then I will see you when I'm back in Blender. Alright, now I'm back in Blender here. Let's see if we can pick up my object, there we are. I'm gonna, I have uh, Node Wrangler enabled, so I'm just gonna click on Principal BSDF, Control Shift T. Go to where my tobacco can is located. I'm just gonna grab everything except for the height and the emissive. And we're going to click Principal Textured Setup. So it's in here, and it looks pretty decent. But I know my normals are inverted out of experience. So quick and easy way to fix an inverted normals without having to re-export and do everything. So we're going to set up a little node. So we're going to search up Separate RGB, Combine RB RGB, Invert, Red goes to red, blue goes to blue, green goes into color, color goes into green. I'm going to click all three of these, control G, group input, group output, and we can save this, but here's that little node group. All we do is plop it right in between the normal map and the normal texture, and that fixes it. So I'm going to go back into modeling here, go into alt V, Look Dev Plus. I'm going to scroll through. Go with this one. S press R for the render. Now I have cycles up here. I'm going to rotate this on the Y. About like so. This looks like a good picture position for me. I'm going to add in a camera. Control Shift Zero. going to make the focal length 84 millimeters. And that's what we're looking like. I'm going to render this out and pull it back up once it's done. 
forgot to say before we render it, we're going to go to our thing here. Go to film, transparent background, and that's much better. So yeah, PRB. And there we have it. That's pretty much all she wrote. That's how I go about making one of these quick little tin cans. Sometimes I'll put in a lot more effort, sometimes I'll put in less effort. I wanted to get this video out quick and not have it be 45 minutes long. Uh, so you can tell there are a few issues. There's some seam lines here that I didn't fix, but that's no big deal. We can fix that in post with a little bit of Photoshop magic. And that's pretty much what we're left with. So I'm going to get a couple more renders of this and once we're done I'm gonna set this up next to my mints container that I made last night and I'll pop it up on the screen but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, if it was at all helpful please let me know down in the comments if you want to see me do anything else please let me know I will not be posting nearly as much uh, in the future maybe a video a month if we're lucky because I'm about to be doing a lot of traveling but I will be having a YouTube channel for that so stay tuned for the updates uh, yeah hope you guys have a good one